Welcome to St. Augustine, the oldest city in the United States. <laughs> In 1565, St. Augustine was founded by Spanish Admiral Pedro Menendez de Aviles, which makes it the oldest city in the United States. There is so much cool history in this city, and from what we've seen so far, we are absolutely loving it. <laughs> Even though we're in the oldest city in the U.S., we decided to go to an Australian coffee shop. So we went to this place called the Kookaburra. It's this really cute, tiny spot in the middle of town. You basically order at the counter. There's not much seating in the building. You can sit outside or they have some seating in this building next to it. But we came to this pretty little park to enjoy our coffee. I got a flat white and then, as I, we were waiting in line, Adam discovered something that changed my whole day. A vegan gluten-free pumpkin donut and it kind of just feels like a it doesn't look totally i mean it looks like a donut in terms of shape it has this amazing looking glaze on top of it but it definitely looks softer than a donut kind of more like it's just like a, a, a mush of stuff that sounds gross but it looks really really good and i love pumpkin and i'm so excited to eat this mm. oh my god it looks more like it has like a cake donut consistency. Yeah, it's kind of like, like donut donut. more cakey. It's very, it has a lot of oats in it, so it's very oaty, kind of like an oatmeal texture, sort of, but oh my God, this is good. This, I wasn't expecting to get anything to eat at this place, so this really surprised me. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I haven't told this story on the vlog, but when Catherine and I first started dating that summer, I went and traveled to Australia on my own, by myself. First time I had ever traveled on my own, so it was a completely new experience. But I went to work and travel, and I was going to stay there for a year, but it ended up being about three months because I was a little homesick, and honestly, I missed Catherine. Woo! And I actually <laughs> surprised her when I came back to the United States. I uh, surprised her at a Starbucks. It was a fun experience, fun <laughs> memory. But I started in Sydney and I worked a couple jobs. So my first job, I went about 10 hours south of Sydney and I worked at a ski resort, which when you think of Australia, you don't think of ski resorts, but it's actually the largest ski resort in the Southern Hemisphere. It's called Perisher. If you're big into skiing, you might've heard of it. Um, so I worked there a month and then I went about 10 hours north of Sydney to a town called Sawtell. I had this apartment. It was like a hundred yards from the beach and this beach was a huge beach. You could look both ways as far as you could see. There's no one ever on the beach. It was awesome. <laughs> and I just go and hang out there. But I worked at this uh, golf resort called Bonville Golf Resort. And uh, it, was a, it was a fun experience working, you know, service industry job. But I was uh, on the cart selling the snacks and drinks to all the members and stuff. And it was fun. But that is where I learned about the flat white, which fell in love with flat whites. They told me I would go out in the morning and they'd be like, hey, you want a flat white? And, and a, and a meat pie I'll show you in a second. I was like, what, what is that? And so they explained what a flat white was and fell in love with them ever since. And you don't see them a lot in the United States, but whenever we do find them, it's fun. Um, but anyways, the star of this show here, my point of my conversation here is this meat pie. So this is a rashers and bacon meat pie. And I think meat pies are a British thing. And so uh, the Australians kind of adopted that from them, I believe, but this has bacon, egg, and pepper jack, and Swiss cheese in it. It looks so good, it smells good. All this stuff has taken me back to my time in Australia. So when I was out on the cart getting ready to sell these, I'd load up this cooler um, with these, and they're like piping hot, and so they'd come in a little bag like the donut came in, or a pastry comes in. And man, they weren't this big though, like I said, but oh, it looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, they're so buttery and flaky and it's so cheesy. <laughs> That's my jam. <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar with a flat white, it is, according to Wikipedia, a coffee drink consisting of espresso with microphone. It is comparable to a latte, but smaller in volume and with less microphone, therefore having a higher proportion of coffee to milk. 
and they had a 10 ounce option and a 12 ounce option. I think typically they are smaller than this, but we just love coffee and we wanted as much as we could possibly get. And it was only 25 cents more. <laughs> Even though it's a tad touristy, this area is really fun to walk around. Yeah, all the architecture is cool. You get that like old world charm, the Spanish influence, but then kind of the newer stuff. It's just a cool mix and the cobblestone streets. It's really walkable and oh, it's just fun. It feels like we've been transported yeah. somewhere else. <laughs> This gate that I'm walking through right here was at one point in the mid 1700s, the only access point on the north side of St. Augustine through the Spanish defenses to get into the city. Just steps away from the historic area in St. Augustine is Castillo de San Marcos. Which, if you're curious to know, is the oldest masonry fort in the continental United States. And it was originally built to defend and protect Spain's claim in the New World. It's, it's hard remembering yeah. facts sometimes. <laughs> so it's $15 a person to enter, but if you have this nifty National Park oh, Pass, yeah. it's full free. <laughs> to the Castillo de San Marcos National Monument. We just sat and listened to the park ranger for about 35 minutes, it was so long. And he dropped some knowledge on us. Man, he knows so much. It was very overwhelming. He just told us basically the history of St. Augustine and the fort and everything. And there were tons of little kids in the audience that knew way more yeah. than I did. He kept asking questions and they were all answering and it was embarrassing because I knew none of the answers. It made us kind of feel a little dumb, but it's okay. But. <laughs> Man, most people probably already know this, but if you can get to the national parks and monuments and stuff to catch the ranger talks, man, you're gonna learn a lot. Yeah. But, so what we said earlier, little caveat about the oldest city thing, is this is apparently the oldest continuously, continuously inhabited European settlement in the lower 48 area. That probably is still not it's accurate. It's probably still wrong. <laughs> it's, it's a long thing. He said when you see the sign of it's the oldest city in America. There's a fine print to it. Yeah, so I, I don't know. We probably still got it wrong, <laughs> but there is a, ca a caveat yeah. to what we said earlier. Also though, before that, Pensacola is actually, that area is the original settlement, but after about six months, a hurricane came and wiped it yeah. out. And then they tried again a hundred something years later, something like I that. I don't know, but it was really long. I forgot there's everything. There's all these little caveats. <laughs> and there's always, we try to tell you guys a lot of facts there's always way more behind it. Than... Yeah, and we're not historians, so <laughs> yeah. we probably get some stuff wrong, but yeah. we're just trying to educate the best we can. Yeah, we try to pick <laughs> out the most interesting stuff and tell you about it, <laughs> and it's mostly true. <laughs> <laughs> we're like Wikipedia. Yeah. cool fact about this fort that we learned is it's made out of this stone or material called coquina and this is the only place in the world the Anastasia Island yeah I think that's what he said and another spot in southern Georgia is the only place in the world you can find this stone and it's cool because they would get uh, there was two major sieges on this fort so all these cannonballs would hit it but this stone is unique in that it doesn't shatter and splinter it just kind of Dent. Yeah, when a cannonball hits it, it just it kind of packs it in more, and so it just chips it about two feet. And then the next day, the uh, whoever owned the fort at the time would go outside and put plaster up and just fix the holes. And he that's called how it, he called it the cheese fort or something the, the like the Swiss cheese fort is what it was called because <laughs> there was all these holes in it. So he said he compared the cannon fire hitting the side as like a knife stabbing cheese. Like eventually, you keep stabbing it, it's gonna crumble but it's gonna take a lot of stabs. And since cannonballs aren't the most accurate, it's like hard to consistently hit yeah, the exact same yeah. spot. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> Hi, 
feel like I'm I feel like I'm breaking the rules, but there's no sign. They would have a sign. We found the buried treasure. <laughs> There's nothing in here though. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here on a Monday, President's Day, and unfortunately, something I was really excited about when I saw that they do this is on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, they do a reenactment of shooting a cannon off. That would have been so cool. I'm bummed we're missing out. I was hoping that since it was a holiday, maybe they were gonna do it, but I don't think so. But they do it multiple times a day on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. So if you come on a weekend, look out for it. You're in business. <laughs> We needed a little snack, so we came to the spot called the Hippo, which is a popsicle spot. And not only is the name the cutest, but their <laughs> interior is super cute yeah. and colorful. The branding, I just love everything about it. <laughs> and they had probably 20 mm -hmm. flavors of popsicles to choose from. I got the Buckeye, which it's a little frosty looking right now, so you can't totally tell, but there's a salted chocolate, I think, on the top. Then it's a peanut butter pie, and then it's coconut on the bottom. It's like all my favorite things combined into one popsicle. <laughs> and I got the Elvis, which is banana, honey, and peanut, peanut butter. butter. That's a cool flavor. <laughs> and then so there's fruity ones and there's also these creamy ones, but the special treat you can do with them for a dollar is get them dipped in chocolate. So that's what I had to do. Mmm. <laughs> mm. mm. Oh, that's really good. Oh, man. Mm. You bit your popsicle. I licked mine. What's I, the right way to do it? I don't know. That's what I do with ice cream, it's too, like a, though. It's like a banana. That's good. That's what I do with ice cream, too. I bite it. Let us know what you think the correct way to eat a popsicle is. Comment below. I think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating it sideways now. That way I can try all the different flavors. And the coconut one is really good because it has flecks of coconut in it, and so the texture is very different. And the peanut butter one, there's little, like, flecks of peanut butter and maybe chocolate in there as well. And... Oh man, when you get like all of it in one, it's really, really good. And the guy working here told us they sell these at Publix across Florida as well as in Georgia. So we might have to go get one. We saw one of the best things to do in St. Augustine is to come and check out the St. Augustine <laughs> Lighthouse. So the lighthouse is 165 feet tall and you pay $13 per person to be able to go up in it. <laughs> but they also have a maritime museum here, so there are other things mm -hmm. to do, but we really just wanted to go to the top of the lighthouse. <laughs> there are over one million bricks in this lighthouse right here, and this actually isn't the first St. Augustine lighthouse. The original one was across the street, but it fell into the ocean in 1880. <laughs> Alright, we're on our way up to the top. It is 219 steps up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep my distance. I don't like the the down looking down. <laughs> <laughs> So that will do it for our time in St. Augustine today. We had a blast here. We really enjoyed it because when we think back to Miami and here, it's just a different experience than some of the other cities you see in Florida. So we had some of our best times today. Yeah, and even other cities in the U.S., uh, both Miami and the Little Havana area and then St. Augustine both yeah. just had a different kind of culture and vibe to them. So that's been really fun for us. So I'd say those were probably our two favorite experiences yeah, definitely. besides Disney in Florida. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're actually leaving Florida. We're leaving a week earlier than planned because we had a crazy opportunity <laughs> come up in Asheville, North Carolina. So excited. <sighs> so that's where we're headed next. <laughs>